Hey guys, welcome back to TK Performance. So we're not racing today, we're actually doing some work. So we have my buddy, honestly, I don't even know, 99 or 2000, what's one of the two, uh, GMC. Now this truck is, um, it, it was his first truck or whatever. It, it's had a different engine in it, but it's a stock 5.3. Um, now this truck is getting the six liter that we just built a few, uh, few episodes ago. It's the six liter with the Texas Speed Mad Max cam. And we just got these valve covers stuck on here and stuff, but we got it painted up. It looks great. But um, we've added some compression to that. We've put a good camshaft in it. It should run and sound really good. Now, yes, it's going in a four wheel drive truck, but um, it still should be pretty cool. So the truck itself has like 460,000 miles on it or whatever. And, and I understand it's not in good shape, but he loves the truck and he's gonna fix it up eventually. He wanted to get the engine done first. so. It's got a new transmission in it. It's fixed to have a new engine in it. He's gonna do the body and paint. The truck should be really sharp and really nice one day and it'd be his first truck. So I'm excited to be a part of this project. Um, we're just gonna pretty much get a time lapse going, rip the old engine out. Uh, hopefully, you know, it won't take long. Hopefully we can get it out today, get the other engine in tomorrow, maybe finish it up on Tuesday or Wednesday, get it tuned, get it all done this week and have it done by this weekend. So that's going to be the plan. We have five days. Let's see if we can get this engine out, get the new one in. all right guys so we didn't time lapse probably as much as we should have we got kind of busy working here and i usually say that because i do but we're working on getting the engine out now this engine's been out before like i said earlier in the video so this is everything went smoothly we didn't have to fight with the bell housing studs or anything like that or the little uh like the nipple that goes into the bell housing on the back of the block but we're getting it out now. We don't know exactly how many miles is on this engine, but um, yeah, it, I think it was under 100 whenever he put it in the truck, wasn't it? Under 100, and then but we'd have to do the math, to see what's on it now. But yeah, this is probably my quickest removal at probably about three hours, I'd say. Go back a little bit. three coming out we're gonna get in preparation for the six liter like I said we're gonna put it in hopefully get it at least in here tomorrow and have it tuned and running and everything ready to go by the weekend that's the goal so As you can see, we got her out. Everything went good, went really smooth. We're gonna swap. We got new engine mounts. These are, that one's broke. Um, but we're gonna put all the accessories and everything like that that come off this engine onto the six liter that goes back in here. We just got it tied up out of the way and everything like that. Guys, whenever you do this, make sure you support your transmission so it ain't, um, it ain't setting on the, the transmission mount. You can break those. And this truck is lifted, so we put it down on blocks, but we had, to, we had it on a two by four, as you can see, but we had to put it on a, a four by six to get it up so we could get the cherry picker underneath the control arms. And we got some smaller tires on the back, but everything went good. Um, now we're just pretty much gonna get this out of the way and work on getting, we can just bolt engine mounts on the six liter and stuff like that. And then that way we'll be set up good to start on it tomorrow.
All right, guys, we got the engine down in here. We fought, um, had a little bit of trouble getting it lined up with the transmission and the engine mounts. Nothing too terribly bad, but definitely had to work on it a little bit. And I just wanted to remind you all, if you're doing this at home, especially I'll show you back here, like the cam sensor and the oil pressure sensor and all that, it is extremely easy to get that hung between the bell housing so you definitely don't want to do that. I've done it before. Trust me, it ain't no good. It'll get between the bell housing and pinch and you won't realize it until you go to plug the sensor in and your plug's gone. So that's just a little tip there. Watch out for that. But this is, has new engine mounts on it and everything like that. So it should be like a brand new engine. We've, we've replaced a lot on it. We've still got quite a bit to do. We've got to finish out the bell housing bolts, the torque converter, the starter, the air conditioner, um, headers, you know, and, and move up from there. But it's coming together slowly but surely and we are putting a trailblazer intake on this like i said i've never actually swapped one in a truck but we're gonna get all that hooked up and we got a holly sniper throttle body so that should be good but we're working on it slowly but surely okay so we got the exhaust on got uh everything looking good there it all looks real good speed engineering i believe these are the inch and three quarter headers we got some arp like the stainless bolts to go in them it all looks real good. We um, got the bell housing tight, got the starter on, all of that. We're fixing, we got the air conditioner on, fixing to work on putting the front accessories on over there. It's coming along. Um, I'm definitely gonna show you all some of the work we have to do with the, with the putting the trailblazer intake on it. Cause there's enough wire in the wire loom supposedly on these gen threes, but we'll have to cut it and dig it out so we can get plenty of wire to um, plenty of wire to plug into the map sensor since it's in the front of the intake but we're moving right along it looks super good in there i'm very excited about it okay guys so we got the accessories on the water pump we put a new tensioner on it a new ac tensioner we got the trailblazer intake mounted on there everything's looking super good but the only issues we're running into is we have the corvette style um regulator on there and it's trying to kink off the fuel lines i don't really like that but i'm not sure what to do about it i think it would be fine but that is a problem there and the map sensor um the, uh, this plug ain't the same as that plug i don't know if we can put the old map sensor in there or they make an adapter or what i'm not sure i've never really done this before so i'm just trying to learn as i go but we're learning here and uh, we'll know for next time, but we're gonna try to make what we can work and have everything, you know, as good as we can get it. All right, so we was putting coolant in it and forgot to take the, or forgot the plug in the back of the head there. I had it up here where the, uh, where the thermostat or the temperature switch goes in there. But the fuel lines, so this is, it's a 9902 truck and we put a Trailblazer SS intake or like off of a Gen 4 Silverado. And you can see the fuel lines are real close to the firewall back there. And it's kind of a sharp angle. I, I don't think they're kinked off, but it's something we're gonna keep an eye on. If anybody in the comments has, has done this and has an easier way of simply fixing that, where it's it's not kinked off, then please let me know. I'd love to, I'd love to figure it out, but we're putting coolant in it. We're fixing to do the first startup. The exhaust, it's got a wild pipe on it from Speed Engineering, but it's not connected to the factory exhaust, so it's dumped about underneath the passenger door. But hopefully it starts up. We verify oil pressure. It is gonna run really terrible. Um, so this truck has factory 20, I think they're 22 pound injectors. They have lower pressure or lower injectors on the 99 and 02. With this intake, um, these are actually flex fuel injectors. So the injector scaling is gonna be way off on it. So it's gonna run terrible, especially going from a 5.3 to a six liter and with a cam and stuff like that. It's gonna run really bad, but we know that. Um, but it's gonna start up and run hopefully enough to verify oil pressure where we can take it and get it tuned. So we're gonna finish up the last few couple things here and then we're gonna get it fired up. Are you ready? All right. You're good. I'm 
I have to crack that throttle, buddy. I'll have to hold it over for you, but it was coming up. Have pressure then, Gage? Yeah. That doesn't sound like one side's dead. All right, go. Well guys, we took the truck and had it tuned yesterday. Everything went good for the most part. Um, the tune and everything went good. The truck runs good, good oil pressure. It sounds good, everything like that. But we, um, right, right as we was done, we had a check engine light for the cam sensor and it was not letting it want to start. So we drove it, we cleared the code, drove it back to the shop last night, put a new cam sensor in it and uh, cleared the code again. And last night it started up fine. It ran perfectly fine. I get it to back it out of the garage this morning and it didn't want to start and the engine lights back on. So I haven't plugged my scanner into it yet, but it's really not making any sense because I've almost guarantee it's still a cam, it's still a cam sensor issue. Um, now that could mean there's something in the plug in the wiring, something like that, or I don't see how it's really possible because it's made into the camshaft, but the, 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 um, like the lug on the cam that the sensor detects, Something could be wrong with that. I sure hope not, um, but it's made into the camshaft, so I don't see how that could be bad, but let's run back over what we've done. It is a LQ4 six liter. We, uh, it's got, it still has the 317 heads on it, but we milled them down to the same spec as the 243, so they're 65 cc combustion chamber. Uh, it's got speed engineering, inch and seven eighths, or inch and three quarter long tube headers. 
It's got a Trailblazer SS intake with a Holley Sniper 92 millimeter throttle body. And we, we went ahead and done new alternator, new water pump, new belts, new tensioners, new pulleys, everything like that. The motor looks very good in here. We're gonna put a cover over top of it and it'll cover a lot of these wires. But I know we talked previously in this video about the fuel lines being up against the firewall. That's not my favorite thing, but I'm not sure of a way around it. Realistically, it needs 90s on it, but I don't know how they would connect to the factory fuel lines. That's something I'm gonna have to look into and uh, work with later down the road. But I'm gonna try to start it here and we'll see how it does. It's, it's warmed up a little bit but the check engine light's still on. See, it just cranks. It's just a crank issue. And if you clear the check engine light, it starts up fine. And as soon as you give it gas, it starts right up. It's running a little rough. The check engine light just throws it all out of whack. We got good oil pressure, everything like that. Guys, I'm not sure what is causing this issue. Um, it's definitely something we're gonna have to look into and get fixed, but we're just gonna have to narrow it down and figure out what it is. I sure thought it was, thought and hoping it was the sensor. We put a new uh, put a new sensor in it and it seems to be still having the same problem. So that's not good, but we'll get it figured out before we get it back to the customer. And uh, I'll update you, all, you guys on what it is. But overall, everything else is perfectly fine with the truck and it's doing very well. Thank you.